topic today is about correlation and linear regression. Correlation and linear regression, this is module number six. Okay, correlation and linear regression. Okay, correlation and linear regression. Okay, so yes, yes. So the key issues here is, the first thing is we have to know something known as covariance, covariance, okay? So covariance, we can define it as a measure of covariation between two variables, okay? Between two variables, variable, we mean maybe X, which can take any values and Y, which can take any values, okay? So or we, check, we are taking we are checking cooperation between two variables okay it indicates the degree of partition between the random variable okay so for example i can say maybe x is representing maybe max of tests and y may be representing uh, maybe annual exams so we are checking is it the one who passed the test also passed the exam okay so this is what we are talking about all other issues which can be represented x and why I just show you more examples on the application of uh, of this. Okay, let me remove this one first. So when we talk of covari covariance, it can be formed by using this formula. We can find covariance using the formula. Okay, using this formula. Covariance of x, y. Cov x, y means covariance. Eh? Stand for covariance of variable x and y. Okay. Is equal to sum of x, y minus sum of x times sum of y divided by n. Okay. This is the formula for covariance. Okay. And in finding the covariance, in finding the covariance, you can get either a negative or a positive value, okay? Our interest is, is the sign. Is it positive or negative? The negative value indicates that the variable move in opposite direction, while the positive value indicates that the variable move in the same direction, okay? So for example, if I give you a, I give you some data, okay, for X and Y, for X and Y, uh, for example, like this one, let me give you this example so that you can understand. When you take, we say numbers are moving the same direction or in opposite direction, okay? Like here you can see, five X, five, 10, 12, 15, 18, 24, the, these values of X are increasing, okay? From five, 10, 12, 15, 18, 24, these data are moving, are increasing. Let us check the value of Y. Is it increasing or decreasing? If you check the trend, 10, 19, 21, 28, 34, 30, you can see X value are increasing, but also Y values are increasing because you start with 10, you go to 19, you go to 21, you go to 28. So this data also are increasing. So if these are increasing and this one are increasing, so we are saying, we are saying the data are moving in the opposite in the same direction, okay? But if, if you can have a different case, okay? This one, instead of starting here, why maybe start with 30, 30 and then 34 and then 28, 21, if they can just uh, change this one, okay? Starting, instead of 10, starting with 30 here, okay? Starting with 30 and then you go to 34, okay, it's okay still. And then you go to 28, 28 until you go to 10. So you can say the data are moving in the opposite direction because one is increasing, another one is decreasing. So this is the idea of saying, if you get positive, means data are moving in the same, if you get positive data are moving in the same direction, but when you get negative, data are moving in opposite direction, okay? So the importance of a covariance is just to find either you get a positive or negative so that you can conclude this data in the same direction means if they're increasing they're all increasing x increasing and y increasing or uh, one is increasing and another is decreasing when you get 
a negative value. So covariance, when you use this formula, your interest is to find, is it positive answer I get or negative answer? When you get positive, you mean you know that all oh, x is increasing and y decrease or oh, x is decreasing and y also decreasing means they are moving in the same direction but when you get a negative value for covariance it means what the data are moving in the opposite direction either one is increasing and another one is decreasing okay so that is how what is the importance of covariance and you'll see how to calculate it let me go straight to another concept which is so important here is a correlation is correlation. Correlation. Okay. So covariance, the idea is show relation between variables x and y, but does not say anything about that kind of relation they have. Is it strong or is it weak? Okay. Covariance just say there is a relation between x and y and the, the, the relation is one is increasing and another one is decreasing all, all are moving in the same direction, okay? But correlation go a little bit further and it say more about, uh, it say also the strengths of that relation. That if there is a relation, but what kind of relation is there? Is it strong? Is it weak? Okay, so another concept here is correlation. So correlation by definition is a measure of strengths of the relationship between two variables x and y. Two variables x and y are said to be correlated. The change in one variable affects the other. Okay. So we have we can have various type of correlation. You can have correlation, positive, or no correlation, okay? And the simplest way of showing, okay, my con internet connection is unstable, let me wait. Okay, so yes, the simplest way to represent a scatter diagram, yes, a scatter diagram can be used to represent this uh, correlation, okay? You can easily see type of correlation using scatter diagram. Can you see scatter diagram? Scatter diagram, something like this one, okay? like this, okay? You have some data here do represented with dot, okay? Represented with dot. And when you put a line uh, moving in the, in the same direction as the data you have, you can see maybe, for example, here you have a positive slope. If you know, you can remember those coordinates, okay? When your line go this way, when a line go this way, like this of case A, it is it has a positive uh, slope. So if it's a positive slope, we say it is positive, okay? it has a positive correlation, okay? But because we use line, so we call it linear. So positive linear correlation, okay? Case B, you can see it here. The data is denoted by these small dots. When we draw a line, it shows it go in negative, negative slope. It has a negative slope. So when you have a negative slope means you have a negative correlation and negative because this we use a line so it's negative and the linear correlation okay let us go to part c for example another case of a relation a, a correlation can you see it here this one it still goes like a negative like a negative what slope but we use a curve so that is why we call it negative but it's not linear this one okay this is a curve is it case c it is a curve, so we call it negative because it moves like this one, like a negative slope. So it's negative, but it's nonlinear correlation. Okay. Let us go to part D. You can see it here. D we have dotted. It does not go with either in a positive orientation or negative orientation. It's just a, a, a collection of dots. Okay. So there is no correlation here. So you say no relationship or no correlation. Okay no correlation so that of this nature have no relationship or no correlation okay so let me go to how to, we can say that this correlation as i've already said to you that the importance of a correlation is to say a little bit more about type of relation that two variable has okay is it 
what kind of relation does it have? Is it strong? Is it weak? Is it what? Okay. So the formula, yes, yes, let me erase this one. So the formula for finding coefficient of, we have to find coefficient of correlation. And coefficient of correlation, the symbol used is rho. Can you see it here? Is rho, yes, is rho, uh, let's, uh, let me use this line. Yes, something like this one, okay? Rho xy equal to covariance, xy divided by standard deviation of x and times standard deviation of y, okay? So you just find covariance of x, covariance of xy, that formula there, covariance xy divided by a standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y, okay? Let me remind you about the covariance because we use it here. Covariance, can you see the formula? If you, do, you didn't copy it, covariance is sum of xy minus sum of x times sum of y divided by, and this is covariance of xy. Sum of xy minus sum of x times sum of y divided by, and this is covariance. So in finding coefficient of correlation, still we use a covariance divided by standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y. Can you see it here? So when you write in full, when you write in full is a uh, annotate here. When you write in full, this part is covariance, sum of x, y minus sum of x, sum of y divided by n is covariance, or divided by sum of x squared minus this one is standard deviation of x, and this is standard deviation of y. Sum of x squared minus sum of x, all squared divided by n, sum of y squared minus sum of y, this is standard deviation, standard deviation of y here, and this is standard deviation of x. Can you see it here? Standard deviation of x, okay? I want to delete this one, so you can remove this one. It's okay. Okay, so you take a row x, y is a symbol for a coefficient of correlation. So let us go straight to the question. Maybe we can increase our understanding of how to calculate coefficient of correlation between x and y, okay? Let me give you this example. We have two values, x and y, or two variable x and y. X represent anything, okay? Maybe max, maybe business issues, maybe whatever. Maybe rain and production, okay? But the idea is you have x, which represents something, with values 5, 10, 12, 15, 18, 24, and you have y, which represents 10, 19, 21, okay? Can be anything, okay? It has a lot of application. But for now, because of time, we cannot speak about it. So for x, we have x here, just represented, okay? Mm, annotate here. So 5, 10, 12, 15, 18, 24, and the sum of x is 84, okay? And y, you can see it here, 10, 19, 21, 28, 34, 30. When you find the sum of y is 142. Just remember, just remember the formula. That is why we are finding, we are calculating this one. The formula says what? We need the sum of x, y from this formula. Sum of x, y, sum of x, sum of y, n, n number of pairs, x, x values, x square, is it? and sum of x all square, okay? And something like this one. So we need the sum of x square, we need sum of x, all of this one, as we use, you can see it here. So x, you have y, you have x, y, product of x times y here, and then we get the sum of x, y, which is 22, 44, okay? Then you have x, x square, we need x square. So five square is 25, 10 square is 100, 12 square is 144, 15 square 25, 18 square 24, 24 square 5, 7, 6, okay? But also need y square. 10 square with a 119 square with 361, and you get the sum of y square, okay? So let us go to the formula. So to the formula here. I just show you very quick because I know you, you know how to calculate this one, okay? So sum of xy minus sum of x times sum of y divided by n 
all divided by sum of x square minus sum of x all square divided by n. Can you see it? there is a difference between sum of x square and sum of x? Then it's square. Sum of x square here, okay? And sum of x and then all square. There is a difference. Can you see it? Well, this one, you just take the sum and then you square it. This one is x square and then you sum it. I think the idea is clear. Okay, as you can see it here. x square and then sum of x, then square, 84 square. Okay? So, rho x, y is equal to, sum of x, y, can you see it here? Is 22.44 here, minus, sum of x is, sum of x is what? 84. Sum of y is 144. 142 divided by n. n, what do we mean by n? How many pair of number we have? Is it here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So we have six values of x and six values of y. That is why we say n is six. So n is six. Can you see it here? n is six and here. And then sum of x square. Sum of x square is 1394 minus 84, which is sum of, yes, sum of x, then square, 84 square, then divided by n divided by 6, and then you take sum of y square is here. When you find you are calculating standard deviation of y, is it? So it will be sum of y square minus sum of y all square divided by 6. The answer will get 0 0.8879, which is rho xy, which is, we call it what? A coefficient of correlation is 0 0.8879. So the comment here, there is high degree of positive correlation between x and y. We say the, the correlation is positive still because we get the positive answer and is high degree or we call it there is a strong, there is a strong relation or strong positive correlation between x and y. Let me explain a little bit about how, about the strength, okay? The strength is, idea is, well, why you say this one is strong, okay? When you have a, maybe a number line, like this one, and then this one is, correlation varies from a negative one to one. Can you see it? From negative one up to one, positive, okay? We don't have more than, one more than one okay so when you have when you have zero means no correlation okay when you get positive 0 0.5 positive 0 0.5 we say is moderate okay is positive but is moderate okay 0 0.5 but above 0 0.5 maybe you get 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 something like that we say this is strong, strong, okay? I think you can, you can understand. It is strong here, okay? But below 0 0.5, below 0 0.5, it is weak. So when you, uh, when you get a correlation maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, they are weak, you have a weak uh, correlation, okay? But in the same case, when I have maybe negative 0 0.5, okay? Negative 0 0.5 is moderate. But above it, maybe 0 0.6, 0, negative, negative 0 0.6, negative 0 0.7, all of this one are strong, okay? So it depends on the number. So is it strong but negative, you can say? That is, when you get negative, this one is the strongest, is it? And positive one is strongest and negative one is it? strongest okay so zero is weak 0 0.5 moderate one positive zero weak negative 0 0.5 is moderate negative one is strong so you can have a strong negative correlation and strong uh, positive correlation i think the idea maybe is clear if you get uh, difficulty you can you can ask later okay so let me go. That is why when you get 0 0.8, it is above 0 0.5, is it? It is above 0 0.5. So we can say uh, it is, it is uh, strong. It is strong because it is above 0 
okay? But it's positive because the answer I get is positive. Yes, yes. Okay. Let me go to another issue here, which is, uh, this is an example which you can use yourself to check the MTT. Create a scatter diagram, you have MTT results, so MTT can be X and AB could be Y. Use the scatter diagram for given data. So you just plot it, okay? Plot X and Y values uh, using a dot, and then you can see is it positive, is it negative, or no correlation, depending on the case, okay? And then calculate row x, y, calculate coefficient of correlation. So if you get a positive, you say this is positive correlation, but is it strong or weak? Okay, you have to, to comment, is it strong or weak? Just check, is it above 0 0.5 or below 0 0.5? Is it positive, is it negative, okay? So another way of finding correlation is using rank correlation coefficient, or they call it Spearman. They call it Spearman rank correlation, okay? And there is a formula here, this one and this one and this one, let me give you the simplest one for you is take this one, okay? Rank, Spearman, Spearman rank correlation is RS equal to one minus six a di square, sum of di square divided by n, n square minus one. This is Spearman rank correlation, okay? But remember, d is equal to u minus v d is equal to u minus v what is u u is rank in x and v is rank in y okay d d is equal to u minus v okay d is equal to u minus v u is rank in x right u is rank in x and v is rank in y don't confuse the way the rank is very simple, okay? Don't worry, I'll explain it to you. So the formula is RS equal to one minus six di square, sum of di square, six sum of di square divided by n, n square minus one, okay? So let me show you how we can use uh, this one to find Spearman rank correlation, okay? Spearman rank correlation. Let me close here. Let us go here. So below are the main term test exam of 10 mathematical students along with their scores. You have MTT for X and AE for Y. Calculate rank correlation, okay? So the first is, the idea is the formula, can you see it? RS equal to one minus six summation of DI square divided by N, N square minus one. Can you see it here? So let me show you how we can calculate this one, okay? So you have X, 61, 63, 46, 41, 50, 49. I can represent it in terms of, uh, in a table, in column wise. 61, 63, 46, 51, okay? And I have Y, 63, started with 63, 87, 62, 69, 31, okay? I presented it here. So the idea of ranking. The idea of ranking is very simple. It's just deciding uh, checking uh, according to the max who is to be number one up to be the last one, okay? Who is to be the first one up to the last one. So according to these numbers, when I check 61, 63, the highest number is 63. So this one will be the first one, okay? The next number follows for X is 61, is it? So it will be number two, okay? The next number which follows after 61 is 58. So it will be number three, okay? Next, number four, 51, okay? Number five will be 50, okay? Number six, 49, okay? 47, number seven. So when you go to eight, you'll find two numbers here. You'll find two numbers. Can you sit here? 46 and 46. It's very simple, like you are deciding you are, you, are, you, are, you are making a rank who to be number one up to the last thing in the exam, maybe. Okay? So you can see a 246. Okay? Here 46 and here 46. So this one, instead of saying, saying one to be eight and another to be nine is wrong because this one, they all get the same max. So it should behave 
the same rank. That is why we say, instead of saying one to be eight and another to be nine, so we say all to be 8.5, because they have, uh, they have scored the same marks. So here will be 8.5 and this one will be 8.5, but their position is eight and nine, okay? So that is why the next number which falls is 45 will be number 10. We will not have number nine because number nine, they've occupied by these two numbers, 46 and 46, but in the rank you say 8.5 and 8.5 because they have, they shared the same score. So for y, so that is why we say u is ranking x. Let me go to y, y is 63, 87 up to this one. So I'm ranking, who is to be the first num number one? The highest here is 87, so it should be number one. Number two is 69, which falls, number two. Number three, okay? Number four, number four, the idea is the same. You have, this one and this one. So it should be, instead of saying number four and number five, there'll be 4.5 and 4.5, but their position is four and five. So we'll go to number six, which will be this one. This, that's how we rank. 58 will be number six, and then number seven, number eight, number nine, and, and 10, okay? So when they collide, you give them 0.5, okay? So the, the next thing we need is D, as you can see, D is U minus V, ranking X minus V. So that's why like, U two minus three, I'll get negative one. One minus one is zero, okay? 8.5 minus 4.5 will get four. Can you see it here? And I just go very quick. Five, for example, here U minus V 10, you will get negative five, okay? Okay, so this is D, okay? But also we need D square according to the formula. So D square will be negative one square will be one, zero square, zero, four square, 16. Then you will get sum of D square, which is one, zero, four, okay? So let, if we go straight now to the solving, okay? If you go to the solve, to solve, we'll get R is equal to one. Uh, let me remove, uh, reduce some, some, Mm, mark here, okay? So one minus 60, then summation of di square, which is 104, okay? Divide by n. Our n is how set of numbers is it? How many numbers we have? A set of numbers we have here is, let us check. Let us check how many numbers we have, that is our n. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 10 numbers. That is why we substitute here 10, and then 10 is square, which will be 100 minus one, okay? So one minus, you will get 0 0.3. Remember, 0 0.3 is weak, is it? This is weak, but it's still positive. So there is a weak positive correlation between MTT and AE, or there is weak positive correlation between X and Y. I think this idea is a very simple, for you, yes, for you to understand. Very simple for you to understand it. Okay. Um, yes, yes. I'm going very fast. Uh, let me go to another concept, the last one, okay, before I can hear from you, okay? There is something known as regression, okay? Regression analysis, this is, that is where we are going, okay? Regression analysis. To be, to explain it very simple, I can say here is like, um, yes, yes. To be very simple, I can say here is, normally we've met with the values of X maybe, you have like this one, okay? Data written, like this one. So what to decide? Is it if you want to put a line? Some they say you just draw a line and touch many points as possible. Some they say, uh -huh, just do what? Just check the many time, many points. Your line should draw in such a way that many points will enter in that line, okay? But sometimes the best way you use is the least square estimate for regression line, or we call a, regression analysis. The idea is 
you have to draw a line in a place where that all points will be near. Not necessarily to touch all the points, but each point should be near or should be very close to the line, okay? So the, here is the idea of a regression analysis. You draw a line where each point will be close enough to the line, okay? So the idea is very simple. The idea is very simple is using a regression analysis is just to fit a line, okay? So you can say just, this is the equation of line, is it? Equation of line, y equal to b naught plus b one x and b one after all this formula. B one is a sum of x, y minus sum of x, sum of y divided by n. If you can remember well, this is covariance, is it? Divide by sum of this x square minus sum of x all square divided by n. This is simply what? Variance, is it? Is variance, okay? And B naught is, so the formula here is just write this one. Write this one, okay? Y equal to B naught plus B one x and B one is sum of x, y minus this one. This is the best formula. Use so important formula and this one mean, okay. So in order to to get B naught, you need to have B one first. I'll explain it to you very simple. You can understand. Don't worry, okay. Don't worry. You'll understand this. But these are the formula which you need in just presenting your a uh, line, okay, which best fit the data you have, okay. Let me go straight to the example so that you can understand. Let me remove this, some of these issues here. Annotate, annotate, yes. Um, and then I remove some of this. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So you have here. The value of two variable x and y are as follows. Obtain a least square equation regression line of y against x. Against x and then estimate the value of y when x equal to 20. Okay? Like this one. Okay? Like this one. So this is your data. You have x and sum of x is 84. Y sum of y you have. X, y you have. Product of x and y. X is square as I've already showed you in the case of O. A case of o correlation. Okay? and y square in this one, okay? So what you, you need here is mean of x, just calculate it mean, you take 84 divided by six because you have six numbers here. Y is 142 divided by six because you have six numbers here, here. And the, the equation of line is y equal to b naught plus b one x, okay? This is general equation of line, okay? General equation of line is this one okay and b1 is sum of x y this one divided by sum of x square divided by x square divided by n you'll get it if you calculate it here you'll get it to be b1 to be 1.527 can you see it here this is b1 in order to get b naught so that we can complete the equation of line which is y equal to b naught plus b n x the, so the idea of regression analysis is to find the equation of line, okay? The equation of line which best fit the data you have, okay? So B naught is mean of Y minus B1, which we have calculated here, times mean of X. So as you can see here, mean of Y is what? 23.67 minus B1, we have calculated here is 1.5270 minus mean of X, mean of X is 14, okay? So you get 2.92. So now you have B naught, you have B1. The idea is to go to the question of line. Y equal to B naught plus B1 X. Remember, Y and X are variables, okay? So you go straight and fit. So Y will be equal to B. Y is equal to what? B naught first. B naught is, yes. B naught is 2.292 plus, Okay, here the formula is here. Y is equal to B naught, okay, which is 2.292, okay, minus, let's say minus B1x. B1 is what? Yes, B1 is 
V1 is 1.5270, okay, times X, okay? So plus 1.5207X, okay? Oh, there is a mistake, I think, here. We got B1, the idea is should be, should be negative, right? Eh? Is it? The 2.292 plus it should be negative because the formula says what? Let us check the formula. Mean of Y, okay, Y equal to B0, okay, 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 plus B1X, okay? Y is equal to B0 plus B1X, it's, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'm sorry, I, I get confused. So y is equal to b naught plus b one x. B naught is zero two point two nine two plus uh -huh, times plus b one is what? This is this is mean to find b naught, but the formula general formula, okay? Y sorry, I note it. Can I note it here? Yes, yes, I, I'm fading. Okay, 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 I can, yes, here. Y is equal to B naught plus B1 X, okay? So B naught is 2.292 plus, here is plus, B1 is B1 we have calculated is 1.5270 times X. So if I ask you uh, from the data, from the data here you have, let me go back here, from the data you have here, and the question asks, obtain the least square equation, a line of Y against X is okay, estimate the value of X, a value of X, a value of Y when X equal to 20. So it's somewhere here, is it? Somewhere here between 18 and 24. X will be equal to what? So, so let me go here. Substitute from this formula, substitute X equal to 20 and see what will be the value. So when you substitute X equal to 20 from this formula, 2.292 plus 1.527 times X, which is 20, you will get 32.832. So the value of Y when X equal to 20 is 32. Can you see it here? So it makes sense because can you see it here? So between 18 and 24, here you see 34 to 30. So between 18 and 24, here you have 20, okay? So 20 will give you something about 32, okay? Because here there is a decrease, 34 to 30, okay? So is 32 something, which makes sense, okay? Which is, you will get it to be 32.832, okay? So that is all I can say for this module. And let me stop here.